Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and welcome to CyberArk First Quarter 2022 Earnings Call. At this time, all attendees are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. And to ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 1 on your telephone. Please be advised that this call is being recorded. If you require any further assistance, please press star 0. Thank you. Now, I would like to welcome Ms. Erica Smith. Ma'am, please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today to review CyberArk's first quarter 2022 financial results. With me on the call today are Udi Mulcati, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, and Josh Siegel, Chief Financial Officer. After prepared remarks, we will open the call up to a question and answer session. Before we begin, let me remind you that certain statements made on the call today may be considered forward-looking statements, which reflect management's best judgment based on currently available information. I refer specifically to the discussion of our expectations and beliefs regarding our projected results of operations for the second quarter in the full year 2022. Our results might differ materially from those projected in these forward-looking statements. I would direct your attention to the risk factors contained in the company's annual report on Form 20F filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and those referenced in today's press release that are posted to CyberArk's website, as well as the duration and scope of the COVID-19 pandemic, its related impact on global economies, and our ability to adjust in response to the pandemic. CyberArk expressly disclaims any application or undertaking to release publicly any updates or revisions to any forward-looking looking statements made herein. Additionally, non-GAAP financial measures will be discussed on this conference call. Reconciliations to the most directly comparable GAAP financial measures are also available in today's press release, as well as an updated investor presentation that outlines the financial discussion in today's call. We also want to remind you that we provide the calculated revenue headwind for additional color on the impact of our subscription bookings mix, but it should not be viewed as comparable to or a substitute for reported GAAP revenues or other GAAP metrics. A webcast of today's call is also available on our website in the Investor Relations section. With that, I'd like to turn the call over to our Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Udi Mokati. Udi? Thanks, Erica, and thanks everyone for joining the call. We had a fantastic start to 2022. The business once again accelerated. Momentum picked up additional speed with our bookings growth rate accelerating off the record fourth quarter, a testament to our execution and the strong market fundamentals. ARR continues to be the best metric to evaluate the health of the business. In Q1, subscription ARR reached $219 million, and growth accelerated to 149% year-over-year. Total ARR reached $427 million, and growth accelerated once again to 48%. And we had the best sequential increase in subscription ARR and total ARR outside of fourth quarter, outpacing our record-setting third quarter 2021 performance. Josh will talk about it later, but given our incredible results, we are raising our ARR guidance for the full year. We also achieved an important milestone, with the subscription booking mix reaching 86%, surpassing the transition target of 85%. That achievement, paired with our great bookings in the quarter, demonstrates that our go-to-market organization has transformed into a subscription engine. We were thrilled to complete the transition in just five quarters, well ahead of our initial plan for an 8 to 10 quarter transition. Our strong bookings in the first quarter exceeded our guidance framework, so even with our significantly higher subscription mix, total revenue came in at $128 million, creating a revenue headwind of about $21 million in the first quarter. Normalizing the mix of bookings to the first quarter of last year, our total revenue line would have grown by about 32% in the first quarter, with the license lines growing much faster. Our results clearly demonstrate, first and foremost, identity security is more critical than ever, particularly given the significantly heightened threat landscape and geopolitical tensions. Second, demand for our identity security platform centered on privilege access continues to accelerate. And third, we are well positioned to execute against a multi-year durable growth opportunity. I will frame today around the pillars of growth, subscription transition, and innovation. Starting with growth, 
secular tailwinds of digital transformation, the adoption of zero trust, and the attacker innovation continue to push identity security to the center of every customer discussion. Geopolitical tensions and Russia's invasion into Ukraine have further heightened the incredibly severe threat landscape. A recent identity security threat landscape survey identified that the race to digitize created an explosion of human and machine identities and an acute cybersecurity debt. Unmanaged and unprotected identities are exposing organizations to significant risk, which could have crippling effects. Less than half of our respondents have identity security controls in place to protect their business critical applications. Another key statistic, over 70% of organizations surveyed experienced ransomware attacks in the past year, two each on average. Our survey results reinforce the durability of demand for identity security. All of these factors came into play with customers and prospects in the first quarter. Privilege Cloud, Employee Privilege Manager, and Access, all SaaS solutions more than doubled again. Momentum continued to build for CyberArk Identity, with even more pickup in new logos, cross-sell, and add-on deals in the first quarter. In secrets management, we are increasingly securing across customers' application estate from DevOps, commercial off-the-shelf, self-hosted, as well as Kubernetes and large-scale container environments. Geographically, we had strong contributions from all our regions, with each exceeding our transition expectations. New business doubled year over year. It was a great quarter. We signed nearly 250 new logos across customer sizes and verticals, from airlines, cruise ships, schools, and hospitals to born-in-the-cloud software. Identity security is becoming a universal requirement. There were many great new business wins, but I want to highlight a few. In a seven-figure ACV deal, a major local government landed with Privilege Cloud and Endpoint Privilege Manager as part of its digital transformation to secure its Azure consoles, Office 365, all network devices, and much more. Scalability and protecting against ransomware attacks were key in this deal. A travel and leisure company, still grappling from the impact from the global pandemic, picked up cyber because of our multiple deployment options, including remote access for both self-hosted PAM and Privilege Cloud. After trying to secure Privilege with a homegrown solution, a born-in-the-cloud cryptocurrency company landed with CyberArk to meet the increased compliance requirements in its industry. Superior security, custom integrations, and scalability were the deciding factors. Cyber insurance continues to be a driver for our business. In one highly competitive access deal, a leading retail technology vendor picked CyberArk identity to meet its stringent cyber insurance requirements and aggressive Office 365 migration timeline. We saw concrete examples of the heightened threat landscape and geopolitical tensions increasing the sense of urgency with some customers, including a major state transportation division that bought Privilege Cloud in response to the potential threat against critical infrastructure. We are also seeing increased velocity in our add-on business, customers adding more users and expanding to new solutions faster. As examples, a major health company, health plan company, is implementing a CyberArk Everywhere strategy to standardize on PAM, securing more privileged users, and is also expanding into Secrets Manager for DevOps. A Fortune 100 transportation company landed with PAM in 2018. The customer success team has built an amazing relationship with this customer, and they will now leverage Endpoint Privilege Manager to secure across more than 75,000 endpoints, including 15,000 employees and 60,000 customer touch points. A state government expanded for privilege, from Privilege Cloud to secure web sessions in the quarter to provide more visibility and protection across applications and users. Our land and expand strategy is at work, and this customer is now evaluating a broad workforce identity rollout for our single sign-on and MFA. VARs, global system integrators, advisories, and managed security service providers are building CyberArk identity security practices across PAM, Access, and DevSecOps. Enablement picked up significantly in the first quarter with both the number of CyberArk certified partners and the average number of certifications trending up. Josh will get into the specifics of the transition dynamics, but I wanted to reiterate that we were thrilled to exceed our 85% booking target well ahead of our transition timeline and are now focused on operating and scaling as a subscription company. We are already seeing the flywheel effect in action we now have more than 960 customers 
with over $100,000 in annual recurring revenue, up over 50% from Q1 2021. We're even more thrilled that our transition is based on a strong SaaS foundation, where we continue to see SaaS first in almost all regions. On innovation, I want to highlight that while we have been transforming Cyberarc into a subscription company, we have also been building the industry's most comprehensive, scalable identity security platform in the market. Our platform is centered on PAM to provide customers with the highest levels of security, but it extends well beyond to secure all human and machine identities. Along with increasing demand for privileged cloud, our growth engines like Endpoint Privilege Manager, CyberArk Identity, and Secrets Manager are making meaningful contributions to the business. Most visible is the strength of our subscription ARR. We recently announced that CyberArk Identity achieved four nines of availability, which enhances security and risk mitigation and drives productivity gains. CyberArk Identity protects against the leading point of attack used in data breaches, compromised credentials. Our solution unifies SSO, adaptive MFA, user behavior analytics, lifecycle management, and directory services into one integrated solution. Cyberac Identity and Endpoint Privilege Manager also reached in-process status for FedRAP high authorization, the government's most sensitive status for unclassified data in cloud environments, putting us in a great position to extend further into U.S. federal with new solutions. In April, we rolled out EPM for Linux, significantly expanding our opportunity and building on the incredible growth in EPM. We are very excited to announce that we added API, a provider of advanced and modern no-code application integration and workflow automation to CyberArk. We acquired the company late in the first quarter and are looking forward to sharing more details about how we integrate their technology for access capabilities into our solution at Impact Live, our customer event in July. With our roots in cybersecurity and our identity security platform centered on privilege access management, we are in the best position of any vendor to help customers navigate the heightened threat landscape. We have an incredible opportunity to execute against this massive multi-year growth opportunity. Before I hand over to Josh, I want to welcome to CyberArk a strong addition to the team in Simon Moyal, who joins us as our Chief Marketing Officer. Simon brings 25 years of experience in driving strong growth transformational change, and leadership in SaaS companies. I am excited to see how he and his team further improve our leadership position and continue to increase demand for our identity security platform. I will now turn the call over to Josh, who will discuss our great financial result in more detail and provide you with our outlook for the second quarter and full year 2022, including raising our ARR guidance for the year. Over to you, Josh. Thanks, Udi. And we'd like to remind you first that we posted slides to the website that walked through our results. As Udi mentioned, we had a stellar first quarter to kick off the year. Momentum continues to build in our business, fueled by amazing execution and a strong demand environment. In terms of the headline P&L, we generated total revenue of $127.6 million in the first quarter with an 86% mix of subscription bookings. We'll come back to the mix in a moment, but as a reminder, the combination of revenue in line with guidance and a mix higher than we anticipated demonstrates that total bookings, again, outperformed our guidance framework for the quarter. Perhaps the best example of the momentum and the health of the business is the acceleration of our annual recurring revenue growth. Starting with the subscription portion, which reached $219 million dollars, and grew 149% year on year. The subscription portion now represents over 50% of total annual recurring revenue. And just a year ago, the subscription portion was only $88 million or just 30% of total. We were thrilled with the sequential increase in the subscription portion of $36 million off the strong seasonality and enterprise software we saw in the fourth quarter. Total annual recurring revenue was $427 million as of March 31, with growth accelerating to 48% year on year. The acceleration in the business in a first quarter off an incredible fourth quarter 2021 results when ARR grew also 44% really underscores that the business is firing on all cylinders. Moving to revenue, subscription revenue generated from SaaS and self-hosted subscription contracts 
reached $51.9 million and represented 41% of total revenue in the first quarter. That's increasing 110% year on year. Consistent with the progression of our subscription transition, perpetual license revenue declined to $10.6 million. Our maintenance and services, professional services revenue was $65.1 million with $54.9 million from recurring maintenance and $10.1 million in professional services revenue. Recurring revenue defined as our total subscription plus our maintenance related to the perpetual license revenue reached $106.9 million or 84% of total revenue. That's growing 40% year on year. With the strength of our execution, we are quickly approaching our target of more than 90% of revenue from recurring. Our subscription bookings mix increased to 86% in the first quarter. That's significantly ahead of our guidance of 79% bookings mix and now surpassing the subscription transition target of 85% we set. We reached our mix target in just five quarters, as Udi mentioned well ahead of the eight to 10 quarter subscription transition tam timeline that we outlined in, the, in early 2021, substantially now completing the transition from a, a sales perspective. Economically, the headwind created by the mix was approximately $21 million in the first quarter. And when we compare it like for like to the first quarter of 2021, when the mix was only 51%, Normalizing our growth for the mix shift in the subscription transition, the license portion of our, of our business, our SaaS, self-hosted subscription, and perpetual would have grown about 62%. Taking the calculated revenue headwind into consideration, total revenue growth would have accelerated to a strong 32% year-on-year. Geographically, the business is well diversified. The Americas, in particular, had a standout quarter generating $75 million in revenue, representing 59% of total revenue. The Americas, again, had the strongest percentage of SaaS bookings during the quarter. EMEA had $39 million in revenue, or 31% of total revenue, with SaaS bookings more than tripling over last year. APJ is also executing well, with SaaS and subscription representing now nearly 75% of bookings a great accomplishment for that region. If we look across the geographies adjusted for the calculated revenue headwind created by the mix, the Americas licensed revenue would have grown by over 100%, EMEA by over 30%, and APJ by about 10%. All line items of the P&L will be discussed on a non-GAAP basis. Please see the full GAAP to non-GAAP reconciliation in the tables of our press release. Our first quarter gross profit was $104.1 million or an 82% gross margin. That's compared with 85% gross margin in the first quarter last year, primarily the result of the increase in our SaaS business. We continued to make investments to drive innovation and growth, resulting in operating expenses of $115.9 million, a 29% increase year on year, and generating an operating loss of $11.8 million in the quarter. Our operating results were lowered by $1.5 million from foreign exchange rates and the approximate $21 million calculated revenue headwind we discussed. Adjusting for the headwind and FX, operating margin would have been positive 6% in the first quarter. Net loss was $11.9 million or 30 cents per diluted share for the first quarter. We continue to attract and retain top talent, a testament to our culture and our success in the market. And we ended March with over 2,300 employees worldwide. That's including more than 1,000 employees in sales and marketing. For the first quarter, free cash flow was $23 million or an 18% free cash flow margin. The strong cash flow is the result of our seasonally strong fourth quarter bookings, renewals, as well as just great collections. This cash flow contributed to our strong balance sheet and we ended the quarter with $1.2 billion in cash and investments. Now, turning to our guidance. Our guidance for the second quarter of 2022 and the full year reflects the robust industry tailwinds, execution, and our growing ARR base. For the second quarter of 2022, we expect total revenue of 135 to $141 million. 
We expect a non-GAAP operating loss of about $14.5 to $9.5 million for the second quarter. We expect our earnings per share to range from non-GAAP net loss of $0.37 cents to $0.25 cents per basic and diluted share. This guidance assumes about 87% of subscription bookings mix and a calculated revenue and profitability headwind of approximately $15 million for the second quarter. Our guidance also assumes 40.6 million basic and diluted shares and about $2 million in taxes. For the full year 2022, we are raising the midpoint of our full year guidance and now expect total revenue in the range of 583.5 to $598.5 million. We are also increasing the mix assumption underlying our guidance to 88% from subscription bookings, and our revenue headwind is also increasing now to approximately $61 million for the year. So for the full year, we expect non-GAAP operating loss to be between $33.5 and $20.5 million. We expect our non-GAAP net loss per basic and diluted share to be in the range of $0.92 to $0.60. Cents. For the full year, we expect about $40.7 million basic and diluted shares, and about $10 million in taxes. Given that we surpassed our subscription transition bookings mix of 85%, we want to reiterate the impact on the business for 2022. As we talked about last quarter, the faster, SaaS-heavy transition is having an impact on the slope of revenue growth and profitability exiting the transition. For the next few quarters, we will continue to face a headwind to our revenue and profitability given last year's booking mix. Annual recurring revenue and the subscription portion of ARR are the best metrics to evaluate the health of the business. As you saw from our guidance, revenue is rebounding already in 2022 with 18% growth at the midpoint of the guidance. We also want to reiterate that our approach to investment hasn't changed. The profitability of our operations is masked by the subscription transition, and we expect to return to the rule of 40 once the transition dynamics play out. Given the acceleration in our business, we are increasing our full year guidance for annual recurring revenue, which we now expect to be between 535 million and 541 million at December 31, 2022. That's a 37% growth year over year at the midpoint. We continue to expect maintenance ARR to decline, which impacts the total ARR growth rate. When you think about our guidance, it is important to note First, the combination of higher mix, headwind, and revenue midpoint means we are increasing the booking assumptions underlying our guidance. And second, raising our full year ARR guidance after just the first quarter of the year demonstrates our confidence in the business and the strong demand we are seeing. In terms of cash flow, while we had a seasonally very strong first quarter, we still anticipate that it will be in line with our non-GAAP net income margin over a 12-month period. The first quarter was a standout quarter to kick off what I'm confident will be another stellar year for CyberArk. Our bookings mix target for the subscription transition is now behind us. We are focused on capitalizing on the massive opportunity in front of us. I will now turn the call over to the operator for Q&A. Thank you, sir. And as a reminder, if you wish to ask a question, simply press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. Your first question is from the line of Suket Kaliya from Barclays. Your line is still open. Okay, great. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my questions here. Absolutely. Hey, Udi, maybe, maybe for you, uh, great to see the results, first of all. Maybe you could just uh, zoom out a little bit and just talk to us a little bit about the competitive environment and, and to what extent you feel like the broader identity platform that CyberArk has is, is helping you competitively. Sure thing, uh, Sackett, and, and, and great to hear from you. So I, I would say that, honestly, this is one of the best, if not the best, uh, competitive positions we've, uh, we've ever been with, uh, in. Um, on, on the PAM front, uh, some of the traditional PAM vendors, are, I would say, are still working through uh, changing hands from private equity. And the disruption there is, is long-lasting, um, and particularly because they haven't been investing in R&D, and that starts to show up in, in sales cycles and uh, in renewal opportunities. And in this environment, in this threat landscape environment, uh, it's just critical to make those investments, and, and we're making sure that, 
uh, our identity security platform uh, is, is we're investing in it, it's secure, and we keep up with the pace of change uh, in, in, in enterprise IT. So that's on the PAM front. For, for access, uh, we see the IDAS vendors, so, so Okta and, and Microsoft, and in, in, uh, in DevOps, we, we see Hashi. But our approach is, is fundamentally different. Um, I think uh, creating the, the, the speedboats or, or those business units we created in, in 2021 really made a difference. We're, we're, we're better at selling our platform, to, to your question, um, and, um, and, and, and customers buy in on our security expertise with PAM, but that they want to take the full journey for all identities, human and, uh, and machine with us uh, uh, across, uh, across the platform. And, and, and based on that, uh, expertise um, and, and the center of excellence were were uh, were, uh, were selected, and I think we're also seeing it in the in the analyst reports out there. Whether it's the Gardner Magic Quadrant for for PAM and Forrester Wave for for IDA. So uh, I, I would say, bottom line, the the foundation in PAM uh, really puts us in the best position to go after the full identity security opportunity. Got it. Got it. Very clear, Josh. Maybe for you, for my follow up. Uh, great to see the full year go up, particularly the ARR. J just to make sure the question is asked, was there anything to note just on timing of deals? It, it felt like the beat in the quarter was stronger than what most were, were expecting on ARR. feels like a portion of that is, is flowing through, not the entire thing. Again, understanding it's early in the year, so, so maybe that's the answer. But, again, just wanted to make sure the question was asked on, on how you sort of feel about the full year guide going up versus the beat in the quarter. Yeah, hi, thanks, Zach, and thanks for the question. Uh, you know, the the revenue uh, in the quarter was was impacted by really the great mix of outperforming on uh, on, on on bookings and uh, and and uh, the overall the overall business uh, that that we saw from the first quarter and and our ability to to raise for the year. Uh, you know, it's because we, we outperformed in, in, in the first quarter and uh, we're increasing, you know, our underlying booking assumptions uh, for the year. And, um, you know, I think, I think you also were, were alluding to it, but the fact that we're able to, uh, to uh, increase our guidance now for the ARR uh, this early in the year really, really attests to our, to our confidence in, in what we're seeing from the demand environment. Okay, got it. I'll get back in queue. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question is from the line of Adam Bro from Stifo. Your line is now open. Great, and uh, thanks so much for taking the question. Uh, so this is either for either Udi or Josh, just on EMEA. So it's great to see the traction there, and you talked about bookings, uh, I believe SaaS bookings up triple digits. But just given the proximity to the war and your larger EMEA footprint, maybe just talk a little bit more about the demand trends you're seeing, and has anything changed either positively or negatively in, in the month of April? No, sure. Uh, Udi here, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off. Uh, I, I would say we're fresh, for, fresh from actually meeting the, the EMEA leadership team in, uh, uh, in, in person, and, uh, um, and, uh, and, and they, they are reporting a strong demand uh, and, and, and very strong uh, pipeline. And, uh, and if we talk about the, the, the macro tension, it's only creating a tailwind of, uh, of, of urgency uh, and, and the need to, to, to take a serious look at, uh, at cybersecurity. So I think some of the trends we saw in, in, the, uh, uh, in, in the Americas in previous years of, of, of increased awareness uh, are, are, uh, are, are definitely reaching uh, Europe, and, uh, and, uh, and for us it's, it's, a, it's a well-performing region. That's great. And maybe just as a quick follow-up, so it was great to see the record new logos uh, in, in 1Q, and you talked in the past about SaaS improving velocity and probably to reduce friction and sales cycles. Just curious if you're starting to see a greater emphasis, more down market um, from your traditional, you know, the enterprise stronghold and, and kind of what other investments are you making uh, to better capitalize on that? Thanks again. Yeah, so, so again, we're, I, I would say on all fronts, both on the, on the enterprise front and, and as, as, we, as we look uh, in, in, the, in the commercial market, we're, we're landing uh, – uh, we're landing with SaaS, and we have more landing. Uh, we have more landing spots with with both Privilege Cloud, uh, uh, EPM, and and, uh, and Cybark uh, identity uh, in in the in the commercial uh, sector, as we, as we call it, which is again the, the high end of of, of the mid market. Uh, uh, certainly, they're they're embracing our uh, our SaaS solution, and and the fact that uh, uh, the, the, there is uh, there is quick time uh, to value, and and you can see that. Um, and in, it's about two thirds of, of those uh, 250 new logos uh, in Q1 came came from uh, from that uh, that segment of the market. Excellent. Thanks again.
Your next question is from the line of Rob Owens from Piper Sandler. Your line is now open. Great. We'd love to touch on the, the new logo growth uh, as well, just given, uh, you know, I think what we've seen throughout the, the earnings season has been durability of spend, but it really feels like your business is seeing inflection here. So can you maybe speak, you gave us the 250 number, but maybe speak a little bit to the, the pipeline that you're seeing as you as you head into the June quarter here. All right. Oh, no, no, great. So I, I, as we, we've been talking about uh, the, the, the buildup of pipeline in the last several calls, and I think the the, uh, the the great new business and the and the, and the doubling of uh, of new business uh, sales is is actually executing on that uh, record pipeline we've been uh, we've been talking about the landing with more spots uh, like like I just mentioned we're having more solutions as landing spots the the channel uh, the channel strength is and and, and the channel uh, uh, pipeline um, and uh, and also landing in uh, in larger uh, deal sizes which which is often more uh, more products and. Uh, um, and, and more, more, uh, and more users. And I would say the the new business portion, as you were asking about uh, about about pipe, the, the the forward-looking pipeline, uh, new business as as the percent of pipeline continues to grow. So that that trend uh, uh, continues, and it's uh, it's that that uh, strong execution of the team against that uh, uh, against this demand environment. Great. Thank you for the color. Absolutely. Your next question is from the line of Brian Essex from Goldman Sachs. Your line is still open. Hi, good morning, and uh, thank you for taking the question. Maybe to kind of pivot off of Rob's question, um, could you give us an uh, maybe maybe a little bit of perspective? You know, I guess during the onset of the pandemic, when you saw a little pullback in deal sizes and how how um, the platform was being consumed, given the mix that you have now uh, with, with greater SaaS mix and um, the greater awareness. How do you think about the durability of growth? And if we were to head into more of a more challenging macro environment, um, where do you think you might see either benefit or risk to the durability of growth with regard to how enterprises consume the platform? Oh, I, absolutely. I, I would say we're, we're we're confident that we're looking at a, a durable uh, long-term opportunity. We've done so much in these past two years to to. To create a wide uh, wide platform and, and increase our uh, our leadership uh, uh, position, uh, expanding from from PAM to identity security and and, and having those uh, initial uh, so so many landing points. If we look at the at the beginning, we talked about uh, about customers not being strategic. Uh, uh, in, 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 in if we talk about two years ago, are are they thinking about this strategically? They definitely are. They see. Uh, identity security and, and, and PAM at the center as the vector of, uh, of, of attack, and, and, uh, and, and we're seeing that trickle cross geography, cross uh, cross vertical. You, you see how, uh, how how diverse we are from a, from a vertical uh, perspective, and that's only uh, strengthening. And then the adoption of the SaaS solutions, as Josh mentioned, even in in, uh, in regions like APJ, where we, we we thought it would take longer here, you know, in in, in Europe for for the prior for for the prior question. Uh, we, we just have a, I would say, stronger demand environment, a, a wider uh, platform-based solution set to to, uh, to execute on that, and and you have a, a management team that that has seen uh, that has seen different times and and uh, and, uh, and 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 cross those uh, uh, those areas with with great success. So we're very realistic. We we, we look at numbers. We're we're, we're, we're when we when we allude to the strength of the of, of the pipeline and the demand environment, we really believe it's. Uh, it's durable and strong. Great. That's very helpful. Maybe just a quick follow-up. Uh, so I want to congratulate you on the CMO hire. Um, I know it's early days, but what do you anticipate you might see with regard to, you know, changes within the you know, sales and marketing, um, you know, management structure of the company, and, and how, are, how are hiring trends, uh, uh, I guess, expected to be impacted uh, due to the change? Yeah, so we expect a smooth uh, transition from an, uh, an organizational uh, uh, perspective because this was highly embraced by by uh, uh, by uh, the, the the sales uh, uh, leadership team, and uh, uh, we 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 all believe that uh, we're uh, back to your to your prior question that we're we're actually in in the best setup right now uh, to step on that pedal of uh, of uh, of uh, both on the on the growth uh, growth marketing uh, uh, element, elevating our identity security. Uh, uh, a posture, 
um, and, um, and and getting uh, getting it out there, the, the leadership position that, that is reflected in the customer base and getting it out there and leveraging this flywheel effect that uh, that we're now seeing from 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 that platform. So we love that Simon uh, comes comes from uh, comes from SaaS and uh, and and, uh, and and in uh, in building great brands. And, and so uh, it's it, he's basically hit the ground running. So so no so our, our expectation is is uh, is upwards and outwards. And like I mentioned, our our next upcoming thing is uh, uh, our our first event, our first live event out of the pandemic in July, um, in with with, uh, with with our customers and prospects. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate the color. Thank you. Once again, if you wish to ask a question, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. And please be advised to have one question and one follow-up question only. Your next question is from Fatima Bulani from CT. Your line is now open. Good morning. Thank you for taking my questions. Uh, Udi, I wanted to go back to the script. You talked about uh, Linux support for EPM. I'm curious if you can characterize and quantify for us how much of that uh, actually opens up uh, incremental opportunity around uh, endpoint privilege management that you previously weren't addressing, and how that might change the uh, competitive or uh, cooptative dynamic with uh, some of the traditionally defined endpoint security vendors. And then I have a quick follow-up for Josh, please. Uh, 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 great, Fatima. First of all, first of all, great question. Um, it's uh, and 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 I only had one sentence for it, but uh, I'm super excited about EPM for Linux because first of all, EPM uh, is 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 one of our strong performance and uh, and and more 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 than uh, more than doubled for us along with the the other uh, SaaS uh, SaaS solutions. And I would say, in, in from a leadership position, it's just uh, uh, a a great uh, we're we're in a great uh, we're in a great place. But we've been addressing so far. Windows uh, endpoints and uh, or Windows servers and endpoints and and uh, and, and Mac uh, endpoints and this really takes us to uh, Linux to the Linux platforms um, and both both servers and and there are there are uh, uh, of course uh, Linux uh, endpoints as well and really taking us uh, in, into into uh, our, our customers uh, cloud environments and uh, and uh, and uh, for those who are hybrid to uh, to the data centers and giving them a you, you uh, that that same easy to manage uh, policies for lease privilege for the Linux uh, environment, which is so important to uh, in, in preventing uh, ransomware and, and privilege escalation and all the the uh, I would say non non repeatable points of uh, of attack. So I would say it's it's within the the huge stand that we're uh, we're we're, uh, we're addressing. Um, but we went after the Windows environments uh, uh, first, and uh, and the team and and, and our and our channels are, are very excited about this, and we'll make more of a splash uh, at, uh, at at our uh, impact uh, event. From a competitive standpoint, I talked about standalone. Comp uh, we 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 have been uh, uh, fully partnering with the EDR uh, uh, vendors to date. Um, they 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 uh, they. Uh, uh, we're, we're, EPM is not an EDR solution; it's an identity security solution for uh, for, for uh, enforcing least privilege on, on the endpoint. And we think that it, it applies just the same uh, as we expand to, uh, uh, to to the Linux environment. But in a, in, from a standalone competitive uh, standpoint, it gives us even additional advantage um, to, to what what we had today to be able to basically cover. Uh, all uh, all platforms and, um, and and again leverage that the, the the multiple landing points we had we have now to to also uh, Linux. I appreciate that and Josh very quickly you know appreciate the in the uh, demand environment and uh, the feedback you're getting from the regional sales team has been pretty robust and strong uh, but I was hoping you could um, uh, more discreetly address any business activity in the conflict regions, and if there was any financial impact to your business vis-a-vis -vis any suspension of operations, any write-down of business, um, any quantification on your Russia and Ukraine exposure would be very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, Fatima, thanks. Uh, you know, that that area is not, a, it's not impacting our results. Um, it's it's already reflected in our guidance. We're, we're not doing uh, business there. Um, and in, in total, anyway, the, the whole area is, is less than 1%. So, um, you know, on the, on the flip side, it, it's kind of a tailwind when you think about the geopolitical volatility, uh, especially as it elevates uh, cyber, cyber risk. Um, but uh, we don't see it uh, being a material impact on us. 
Thank you. Your next question is from the line of Greg Moskowitz from Izuo. Your line is now open. Okay, thank you for taking the question. Very impressive acceleration in ARR. Congrats as well on reaching uh, the subscription bookings transition so far, uh, the target so far ahead of schedule. So I had a question, uh, Udi, on EPM as well. C can you maybe just expand on what has made EPM in particular so much more valuable to the point uh, where it's become a key driver of that acceleration that you've been showing? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, uh, the, the whole zero trust uh, uh, framework doesn't really work if uh, if, uh, if, uh, if 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 someone can can take over that uh, that end machine that uh, that somebody is uh, is, is establishing that, uh, that 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 touch point or or handshake uh, with um, EPM really allows organizations to know that okay that endpoint will run with minimal uh, privileges will be in a least privilege mode and it's really foundational to uh, to zero trust and then there's the the additional added benefit uh, discovered over the years I mean it was it was at least least privilege really prevents a uh, 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 malware uh, uh, from from uh, from from running and and uh, moving uh, uh, laterally, and uh, it's become a, a an important enforce point for um, uh, for preventing ransomware from from spreading, and so we, we see those, uh, those those two major drivers: the solution to help uh, basic cyber hygiene of running in least privilege mode to support the zero trust uh, frameworks, and 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 it helps prevent. Uh, uh, even if ransomware landed, it helps prevent most ransomware from landing. But even if it landed, from uh, from from propagating, and and of course uh, the, the 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 many years of of investing in making it uh, 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 super user friendly is is that it applies to all, uh, all all users in an organization, and they don't feel it. It's very transparent transparent to uh, to the user. All right, that's great. And then just as a follow-up, uh, Udi, can you talk to how your uh, global government business performed this quarter, as well as what your expectations are uh, for this vertical over the rest of the year? Thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it, we, 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 as you, as you can see, probably in, in the uh, in, in the slides that we pre presented, the global government is is, uh, is nicely a 10% uh, part of uh, part of the pie, and. Uh, uh, and, and really, I would say uh, we're, we're seeing steady adoption uh, worldwide, and uh, um, and, and it continues to be an important vertical that, that we're investing in. I talked about the, the investment in in the in the, in the FedRAMP uh, uh, certifications to, to to be to be able to begin to sell our our, our SaaS solutions uh, to the U.S. Uh, federal government. But we're seeing adoption around the world, uh, both for for uh, our SaaS solutions, but 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 also for for governments that do want. Uh, uh, self-hosted, we're, we're giving that uh, that optionality, and that's uh, that's very important for them. And uh, and and very often, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, certifications and uh, are, are are giving us credit uh, elsewhere around uh, around the world on, on our investments in in this in the security and scalability of the platform. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question is from the line of Hamza. Father Walla from Morgan Stanley. Your line is still open. Hey guys, thanks for taking my question. Um, so uh, really appreciate all the all the great detail earlier. Um, maybe just uh, one for uh, one for Josh. Um, I'm curious as you think about your your full year outlook. Um, how are you handicapping for all the you know macro uncertainty out there? I get that um, you know. Security right now is, is, is fairly defensive given the geopolitical volatility, but in the past, CyberArk has had, I think, relatively longer sales cycles. And then in relation to that, how should we think about the, the seasonality in, in net new ARR for the rest of the year? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Hamza. I mean, with regard to your first question, uh, you know, we're very confident uh, about what's going on this year. Obviously, the economy will do what the economy was doing, but I think Udi addressed it earlier on today that, you know, we have, uh, you know, a very strong, uh, resilient type of a business model uh, that is basically, especially now with uh, with us uh, hitting our, our kind of our uh, subscription uh, mix at uh, of, of over 85%, where we're we're really now driving towards going through the to the other side of the transition for towards growth and profitability. And when we think about this year, um, you know, the demand environment uh, has not has not changed, and if anything, has has strengthened um, uh, in, in the course of time. I mean, I think we saw news even this morning uh, of of pretty material events uh, uh, to, to to in Costa Rica. 
And uh, so we're, we're continuing to invest. However, I will point out that, you know, we're an experienced management team, and Udi talked about this before. So we understand, uh, you know, that we're, that we're constantly monitoring uh, the situation, but at this point, we're, we're very confident on where the, where the business is, where our pipeline is, and, uh, and the demand environment around cyber. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's sail ahead. Um, and on the second question, r remind me. There was, there was a second question. The uh, net new era, our seasonality for the rest of the year. Yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, uh, clearly uh, where, you know, as as we get further and further uh, into the year where the where the delta uh, and where the delta on the mix gets smaller and smaller, so, you know, we have much uh, bigger compares uh, when we get into, into the second half of the year, so you're going to see a smaller uh, growth. Uh, in ARR, and we started off with a very with a very strong growth of 48% in the first quarter. So I, I think that uh, it'll go kind of in tandem with the uh, the narrowing of the of the headwind uh, delta between uh, the you know 80 the high 80s uh, that we're doing in subscription business uh, this year versus uh, you know versus the 70s that we did last year. And uh, so Q3 and Q4 will, you know, will have the narrowest, uh, narrowest jump. Thank you. Your next question is from the line of Joshua Tilton from Wolf Research. Your line is now open. Hey guys, thanks for taking my questions and congrats on the results. I wanted uh, to go back to the ARR raise first. Can you guys maybe just comment on how much of that is possible conservatism? Uh, versus this dynamic of expanding subscription versus declining maintenance net new ARR that you guys baked into the guidance. Yeah, I think I think um, you know we we do anticipate some uh, some decline uh, in the maintenance, which actually makes our our expansion of that ARR guide you know even much more powerful because we have to make up uh, make up for that uh, for that maintenance uh, reduction. Um, and you know we're you know we're we're really excited about the fact that we're able to come in at at a 37% guide for for the ARR, um, and it's I would say that uh, the increase is is, is uh, really reflective of uh, a lot from the net new ARR business uh, that that we're doing. So um, it's not it's. It's around the new business that we're doing and the continued uh, um, renewals and upsells of, of the existing customers. And, and when you guys, um, could you possibly maybe just expand on what you're seeing in regards to maybe deal sizes and ASPs as you continue to be you know, more successful with your bundling strategy? And maybe how did that, if at all, benefit growth in the quarter? Yeah, we're actually seeing an uh, uptick uh, as we have for, for several quarters in a row on, on deal size. And uh, I think Udi alluded to it before, particularly on new bids, which, uh, you know, really, really uh, started to surge this quarter. We saw, we saw an uptick on the, on the new bids uh, deal size. So, you know, I think... Um, yeah, and it's lending with, lending with more products and more users because of, of how, how we created the, uh, the, the platform strength. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Your next question is from the line of Roger Boyd from UBS Securities. Your line is now open. Hey, thank you, and uh, congrats on a nice quarter. Wondering if you could talk about the um, the, the, the cloud marketplace, the AWS marketplace, uh, the size and growth of that pipeline, and just how you expect that opportunity to evolve as you push further with secrets management and add things like EPM for, for Linux. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'm personally very, very bullish about that that uh, the, the partnership we're building in, in AWS, and it's, and it's kind of a new thing that uh, that, that that evolved uh, and, and started uh, and started last year. If we look at uh, uh, you know, in just in Q1, we had we had great examples of that of that uh, synergy where it actually complements uh, what our channels are doing, and and we can streamline opportunities through uh, uh, through to to the mutual uh, AWS uh, uh, customers and uh, and 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 I would say strong momentum uh, continuing into Q1 and and there's a strong pipe build for uh, uh, for for the rest of the year and and uh, and for next year. So we'll, we'll we'll try to give more more specific numbers, but I can tell you I can I can definitely say that the the, the, the strong pipeline build 
And you, you're right that uh, the, the, the additional uh, solutions uh, that, that, that we are rolling out uh, create even more opportunity on, 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 that, uh, on that collaboration. The, they'll, they'll be, uh, the, there are some things in the works that, uh, uh, that we will elaborate in, uh, in, our, customer, uh, in our customer event uh, of, of, of more streamlined ways uh, to, to partner up with AWS. Got it. Makes sense. One, one, quick, one quick follow up. Can you just talk about operational security, OT, the role CyberArk plays in, in securing infrastructure, and what you're seeing in demand, just given the emphasis on protecting critical infrastructure worldwide? Yeah, yeah. We we we've we've seen. Uh, I, I would say when we and I think we we even uh, painted that when when in our last uh, investor day that uh, organizations usually leave that part. To last because it's a separate uh, type of, uh, of network, uh, but we have multiple customers securing uh, their their operational technology environment with with CyberArk from electricity companies, energy companies, uh, uh, sometimes even 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 remote locations uh, in their uh, in, in in their uh, in environment, and, um, and, uh, and and so it, it, it's it's become a stage of of, uh, of of what we call the CyberArk uh, blueprint as as customers roll out. Uh, identity security and privilege access management. Uh, they 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 expand to their uh, to their OT uh, environment. Sometimes we have built-in integrations directly with the uh, with, with the providers of uh, of of, of the, uh, I would say the, the the endpoints on the operational side. And sometimes we we partner with with gateway uh, providers where where they bridge us uh, to to be able to manage and rotate. Uh, and secure um, uh, identities for for those environments. I I, I agree with you. It's a it, 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 it's a it's a growing concern for these uh, for these infrastructure uh, organizations, and and we're, we're an important part of the solution. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Your next question is from Itaiki Drone from Oppenheimer. Your line is now open. Uh, thanks. Uh, a lot of questions have been asked, uh, but Josh, I want to just from a financial standpoint. Um, it looks like perpetual is kind of coming down. So in your guide for the next quarter, can you help us kind of get our hands on what do you think perpetual revenue, what is your assumption for perpetual revenue as part of the overall pie? And then second question is around inflation. Uh, you know, clearly everyone is carrying the higher expenses with inflation. We feel it everywhere. Um, how do you think about price increases um, going forward in your products or perhaps on maintenance uh, as well? I mean, it's the first time that maintenance is down on a, a quarter over quarter ARR. So I'm just kind of trying to uh, understand how you're going to play that uh, price increase card going forward. Yeah. Hi, Itai. Thanks for the question. I'll start with the, with the second question so I don't forget it. Um, but uh, you know, so we we did uh you know we do uh, have price increases uh, particularly as we particularly around the the maintenance and and things that are also very uh, uh, personnel related. Um, so in, in terms of uh, services, in terms of maintenance, uh, in terms of renewals, uh, we have uh, built-in uh, ways for price increases. I think you know also you know when we think about our uh, on our uh, perpetual, uh, those prices have you know have increased as well. And we every year annually, um, uh, you know, look at at price uh, at price uh, increase increases as it relates to the current inflation. But uh, we have incorporated that uh, into into our our model uh, for this year. And um, with regard to uh, with regard to uh, the perpetual uh, revenue, I mean, we gave the kind of the mix that uh, you know guiding for uh, for for Q2. Um, and, uh, and, the, and the related headwind. I think, um, I think the best way to look at it is probably similar to, to Q1. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Your next question is from the line of Eric Heath from Keyback Capital. Your line is now open. Great. Thanks for taking the question, and I'll uh, echo my congrats as well. Udi, just curious to hear your thoughts maybe on the impact of the Octa security incident um, in the quarter and what that might have had an impact on the uh, on the market more broadly and maybe how it affected your business or customer conversations in the quarter. And, and more specifically, just curious if you saw this provide a tailwind for your vendor access solution. 
Yeah, so so uh, so I would say that uh, it, it underscores that uh, that every company has to be diligent on security, and 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 so it became one of those things, uh, one of those names that come up, uh, or, or or an example of a breach that comes up on on the on that importance of uh, of uh, investing in uh, in security, and also to, to your last point in 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 ensuring the the vendor access and uh, and, and third party controls. Uh, you, you know, we have a six to nine month cycle, so it, it didn't have a, a, a Q1 uh, uh, impact. But uh, you know, I think the important thing is the, the momentum we're seeing in for our access solution is, is really because customers uh, are requiring a security first approach. It helps us emphasize you need a security first uh, approach, and and this foundation of uh, hey, from the makers of PAM, we're coming from 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 PAM. We secured your most sensitive uh, uh, users and, and third parties. We we uh, we we're we're, uh, we're well positioned. So uh, I I think the the example uh, it, it can, can also lead to that uh, growing awareness of the importance to, to for for securing uh, uh, third party and, uh, and and vendor access. Uh, and and the, the the most important thing is is is, is that uh, we're, we're proud of of our security first approach to to identity. Great, that's helpful. And just one quick follow, just on the, on secrets management, just. Curious on an update uh, timing of uh, the launch of the cloud version and how you might see that change in your competitive positioning or maybe even accelerating adoption of secrets management within your customer base. Yeah, so so like like uh, it, it's it's uh, we'll be, we'll give more specific timing. It's it's going to be uh, uh, launched this year. It it, uh, it 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 will take away some of the uh, uh, reduce the the time to value for customers. So anytime we do that, and we've done that across the uh, the, the, the portfolio it, it helps in, um, in 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 adoption um, and and gives that will give us a, a competitive edge. So in, for, in terms of timing, the 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 SaaS version uh, will will be within this year and and uh, and stay tuned. And in the meantime, uh, we're we're, uh, we're we're helping we're helping uh, uh, customer uh, customers in in their in their hybrid uh, environments and and uh, and signing up some great marquee accounts and uh, again especially in their modern. Uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, container environments, like I mentioned. Great, thank you. Thank you. Your next question is from the line of Trevor Walsh from JMP Securities. Your line is now open. Great, good morning. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, maybe just one quick one uh, for you, Odi. Uh, wanted to follow up on uh, one of the points you made during your prepared remarks around wins. You mentioned the cryptocurrency company that um, had actually replaced the homegrown solution. I just wanted to confirm or kind of be, make sure I'm clear. Was that a, a PAM-related homegrown solution or something more in the access space? You could maybe give us some more detail there. And then as a follow-up to that, is that a, a trend that you see just generally within the PAM um, part of the, the house of customers kind of having homegrown um, solutions? And if you could maybe give some more just color um, around that trend as you see it. Oh, it's a, it's a great question. I actually would, would say that in the past, it was in our in our early years is when we saw that some of the um, uh, highly regulated organizations were, were making an attempt to uh, to create their own uh, homegrown, and and we were rapidly replacing that. And 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 you're all familiar with our strength in the in the in the financial industry. I think this was an example where uh, kind of a, a a you know type of a, of a born on modern environment. Uh, uh, company took uh, took a stab at, uh, at at building it uh, on on its own and just saw that it it, does, it doesn't scale and it's it's not uh, and it doesn't provide the the security that uh, that they need so it was a great win for us um, and you know just like we saw other great wins in the quarter in in, in born in the cloud type uh, uh, type organizations where where we can we we can, we can come in and be part of the the solution and of course they're very similar to. Uh, uh, to a financial organization and are very uh, 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 and are highly highly targeted. So it was a great win uh, for us, and uh, uh, and I'm, and I'm actually I'm hoping that uh, in one of the days we'll be able to, to actually show a case study and and uh, and disclose the the customer name uh, with with their consent because it's uh, it's definitely a great logo. Great, thanks again, and thank uh, good job in the quarter. Thank you very much. Your next question is from the line of Andrew Nowinsk from Wells Fargo. Your line is now open. Hi, this is Justin Donati on for Andy. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, you've talked about the strong pipeline um, 
just wondering if you could quantify anything around, you know, how your win rate, sorry, your win rates have been trending, um, and, and just any color you could add there. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't have, I don't have numerical. I would say, uh, I would say, uh, back to my initial comment. I was just going fast because we're at the end of the call. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, competitive uh, uh, position has, has, uh, is probably one of the best we, we've uh, we've seen it in. And in on, on the PAM front, so that's very strong. And, and for us, uh, the, the world of, uh, of access is, is, uh, is, is an expansion, so we're very excited to see our win rates trend up and, and be very, uh, very differentiated, uh, uh, be very differentiated there. Okay, and if I could just ask one follow-up question. I mean, outside of PAM, what is uh, typically the, the next add-on for customers? So, so I, I would say that the, the landing spots are very uh, are, are, are privileged cloud uh, EPM and and uh, and, uh, and and our uh, our Starbike, uh, identity and 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 often we see a combination of those in in the land and and whatever was not part of that is, is it would be the the runner up followed by by secrets management as, as add on business um, especially in 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 our uh, in, a, in our strategic account that, that follow our. Uh, our, our blueprint and are expanding us to uh, to, to secrets management, but it 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 rotates between uh, privilege cloud landing with privilege cloud and EPM and and, and or uh, uh, cyber arc identity and and uh, it it would uh, expansion around there and very often we're we're, uh, we're we're coming in with with a package that 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 introduces them and and gives them a flavor of the other solution and um, and hence we that's why we talk about the the velocity of of add-on because they have a taste that we need to consume. Uh, quick time to value, and, and we can get that add-on business faster. There are no further questions. Mr. Udi Mukadi, please go ahead. Great. Thank you very much. We, we are thrilled to start uh, 2022 with an incredible quarter with strong demand for our identity security platform. And uh, as always, I, I want to thank our customers and partners for being the, that cornerstone of our success. I also want to extend special appreciation to the entire CyberArk team who came together and worked hard to execute our subscription, this subscription transformation strategy and shifting us in five quarters. It's amazing. Thank you. And with that, this concludes today's conference call. Thank you for attending. You may not disconnect.